Great. Again, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar, my name is Guy Gaster. I'm with uh, Visit North Carolina and serve as our state film commissioner, but also help host our monthly par partner webinar series and am happy to have you joining and really excited about a little bit of a unique spin on our webinar series um, for the month of November. Uh, we are excited to uh, bring to you Laura Cohn, uh, who is a Microsoft Certified Application Specialist. Uh, she works with uh, both NC State University as well as Wake Tech here in the Triangle area, um, teaching various uh, Microsoft uh, classes. But uh, we wanted to have her come and give us some tips on OneNote and hopefully help us uh, be able to manage our time a little better and stay better organized. So um, I, this is, uh, if you're not familiar, a uh, two-part series, obviously the first being today, going from 10 to noon, and then we'll come back uh, next week, uh, same Thursday time slot, 10 to noon again, and Laura will continue the instruction and build upon what we talk about uh, in today's session. So again, excited to have you all. Um, it would not be a, a Zoom webinar without some technical difficulties, so um, please bear with us, but Laura's camera is not working. The good news, her uh, microphone and her screen share is, so uh, she will be the voice behind the black curtain if you're using uh, the, the feature that shows the speaker uh, box, uh, if you will. Um, and as we continue, I would like to do a quick test. Um, can everyone see or activate their raise hand uh, icon? Just want to make sure those are working. Beautiful. Uh, so what we will do is as we continue through this, um, thank you for raising those. Uh, you can lower them, I think, by re-clicking it. Um, but as we continue through, if you have questions, uh, feel free to use that raise hand feature and uh, we'll, we'll recognize you. Um, we're also, we'll be monitoring the Q&A um, app as well as the chat function. So, but uh, raising your hand uh, would normally, would probably be the easiest in this case. Uh, and, and again, um, as questions come up or if you need Laura to go back over something, just raise that hand and we'll, we'll make sure it, and acknowledge that. Um, without further ado, I am going to turn this over to Laura. Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry that you can't see me, but you might not be. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I told Guy I um, woke up and... I am dressed and ready to go. And well, I logged into the meeting earlier and, and everything seemed fine. But the second time I logged in, it just is not working. But that's OK. I'm so glad that you're here and I'm able to come to visit North Carolina again and do a little presentation on one of my favorite applications, OneNote. So uh, can everyone hear me? First of all, could you do maybe a raise hand or a any other thing to let me know that you can hear me? Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure that part was working. So what I'm gonna do is take you through a little PowerPoint, but I'm also gonna be screen sharing OneNote with you. And I highly encourage you to join in with me and actually do some hands-on. Um, don't maybe wait just a moment until we actually get to the part of the presentation where I show you um, the OneNote screen and which particular OneNote we're gonna be using because there's several varieties. And I'm going to discuss that first. So I'll let you know when it's time, if you want, and I hope you will join in uh, with me and try some things out. I've also built in some what I call activities and you'll see those on the screen. Those are things that you can try on your own and they won't take long, any of them, maybe just a few minutes, but it's gonna help you, you know, just make sure that you uh, have grasped the content and the concepts that we've just discussed in a section, and then we can always go back if we need to. Okay, so without further ado, um, again, welcome, and I'm glad to have you here. So let me jump in and let's talk about OneNote. All right, uh, as Guy mentioned earlier, uh, I just want to reiterate, this is going to be a four-hour uh, 
webinar, if you will, broken down into two days, today and next Thursday. Uh, we'll begin at 10 and end at 12 on both days, around 12. Um, so here's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to identify OneNote software and its different versions. Um, you'll understand why we want to do this in the beginning, because if you're looking at your OneNote and it doesn't look like my OneNote, there's several reasons that could be. So we want to be sure we're all on the same page for that. Then we're going to explore components of notebooks and what those are, how, what, what they're, um, excuse me, what they're for. And then we'll move a little further into that and create notebooks and their content. So you should be able to get your own notebook started if you haven't done so already. Okay, so that's for today. Now I'll tell you about next time's objectives when we get closer to the end. So in the meantime, if you take a look, you can see that <clears throat> in OneNote, it's a note-taking application or software program. So we've all probably used OneNote, uh, excuse me, notebooks before in our lifetime. Maybe like this person who seems very happy with her notebook. Um, she does have some sticky notes, I think, popping out of the side. And you're going to see how those correspond to OneNote notebooks as well. Uh, we're going to be able to get notes inside a notebook or multiple notebooks. Uh, you'll be able to get notes from many different sources. Most, most of what we do today is going to be typing notes and drawing notes. Uh oh. And if it works for me, because I'm a little bit technically challenged this morning, apparently, I'm going to try to show you some dictation. Uh, which is awesome if you can use it to create notes. Uh, next time we'll be using Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and uh, pictures and screenshots, but today is more like the getting started part of our seminar. All right, so here's what I'm talking about when I say we want to be careful about OneNote and which one we're using uh, versus, you know, if my screen doesn't look like yours. So there's two main I guess, software offerings from Microsoft. This one, OneNote for Windows is older. It does come with any PC that runs Windows 10 or 11. It won't be supported though after September of next year. It also has fewer features than the one that you probably want to use, which is the one I'm gonna show you, called the OneNote app. Now the OneNote app used to be called OneNote 2016 it's actually gone through a lot of different names, just like other Microsoft software and, and parts of software. But the, the one that we'll be using um, is part of Office. And actually, Office is not called Office anymore. You may know this. It's called Microsoft 365. They do still call the, um, the Office that you can purchase Office 2019 or 2021. But the OneNote app is part of all of those. And it does have more features than the one that just comes on your PC if, you're, if that's the device you're using. So let me make it a little clearer on this next slide. Within OneNote, the desktop version that I'll be starting in just a moment, just to confuse you a little bit more, um, OneNote actually has a desktop version as well as a web version. So if you are comfortable with going in and starting programs like Word and Excel, uh, you know that you can access those through the start menu and you have the full blown version of the program. However, you can also probably go onto just a web browser, maybe even on a tablet and log in with a micro Microsoft 365 ID, uh, password ID and, and uh, password and then be able to start Excel or Word or PowerPoint or OneNote from there. But they, those um, apps do not have as many features as the ones that are the desktop apps, which, are, which is why we want to use those most of the time if we can. Uh, if you like, you can also get these for your phone um, using OneNote Mobile, just like Excel Mobile, etc. So the one I'll be using today is the first one, the desktop version. Now, if you go to your start menu and you don't see OneNote, then you can still download it by logging in to, to your Microsoft 365. So you could go to Google or Edge, 
and look, just even do a Google search for Microsoft 365 login, sign in, and then you'll see the apps that are supported. And you can also usually download the apps that are the desktop ones from there. You can also share notebooks. We will be doing this on the second session. Many of you may, might be doing it already, um, but you can share notebooks with other people. And we wanna make sure that we understand what those other folks can do within our notebooks. So I'll get more into that next time, but you can have more than one person in a notebook at the same time. All right. So what I've just been discussing is what maybe you want to try at this point, if you, if you like, which would kind of put you with me uh, in terms of what I'm about to show you on my screen by going in and starting the OneNote app. So if you go to your start button in Windows, then you're going to see if you just typed in OneNote, all one word, you may see two different choices like I'm showing on this screen. And so the one that says app is the one that I'm gonna be using today. Uh, just a tip for you, you may have done this with other programs already, but if you hover over the icon when you go to the start menu, you can right click over it and say pin. And there's two options, you can pin to your start menu or you can pin to your taskbar. And that's when it shows up at the bottom of the screen near the start button so that you can just get right back in very quickly into any of those programs. So if you would like, then go ahead and start the OneNote app. So here's a picture of my start button and choosing OneNote app, whether or not you pin it to your taskbar, that's up to you. Now, the next thing I'm gonna be doing is exploring the OneNote app. But before I do that, I'm just gonna see if I can move on over into my OneNote and then I'll pop back over to the presentation again. So I'm hoping that you can see my OneNote screen at this point. Can you guys give me a, a quick hands up and just let me know if that's happening for you? Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Now I just toggled away from it, so let me get back there again. Here we go. So you're, you're opening OneNote and when you open OneNote, the next question I'm going to ask is, you know, what am I looking at here? So you're looking at a notebook's contents, but which one? Because when you first go into OneNote, you actually have a lot of open notebooks typically. So I'm going to scroll back over to my presentation here as quickly as I can. Okay. And when you open OneNote again, you typically have a lot of notebooks open. Now that can be a good thing. And of course it can be a not so good thing. Why is it a good thing? Uh, one of the reasons is we might have to have all these notebooks open. Maybe I've got procedures in one. I have a personal notebook in another, and I may need just to just switch back and forth to them throughout the day. Um, it could be that you have five different procedural types of notebooks open and you need them open during the day to work. So instead of having to go open, close, open, close, OneNote leaves them open. Uh, in order to close a notebook, you actually have to purposely use the close this notebook command. If you are in OneNote right now and you go to file on the ribbon uh, or on the menu, you're gonna notice that there is no, I'll do it on my screen now. I'm gonna click file, there's no close command over on the side here. So I'm gonna hit the back button here. So again, we don't wanna do this, but if I were to hit close in the corner up here, then it would close me all the way out of OneNote. So I'm gonna look at the list of notebooks that I have open now. And I realize that yours may not look like mine. So I'm gonna show you where to go in just a moment to make your screen look a little bit more like mine if you like. It might be easier to follow along with me if that's um, what you want to do. So when I click here, the, the notebook that I'm in is actually called OneNote Notes. And here are the other notebooks that I have open. I have one called Power BI, another one called My Next NC Trip. Okay. And then I have one called Quick Notes, and we'll be discussing all of those as we go through our material. Well, not the Power BI, but we will discuss uh, the notebooks that are open as well as Quick Notes. 
So if you look at my screen, you can see that if I want to close one of these, even one I'm not in right now or looking at right now, I can simply right click over it. And at the bottom of that screen, you'll see close this notebook. And I'm going to go ahead and close that one called Power BI because I don't really need it right now while I'm talking to you. OK, so now here's a list of my open notebooks. So again, when you first start OneNote, all the notebooks that you have, unless you purposely have closed them earlier, uh, will be open. So can you switch between the notebooks that you might have open? Are you able to do that and tell what you have? OK. So let me know if you have any questions here. But the next thing that I'm going to discuss is what we see on the screen. And by the way, I'm going to be sharing a PDF of what I'm showing you on the screen with you. Um, a little bit later on, you'll be able to have all of this if you want it. And I'm happy to share it with you. But for now, I'm just going to ask you to look. So I'm in a notebook in this screen called OneNote Notes, which I was just in. And notebooks um, have sections in them. So if I were to take this screen and just kind of flip it on its edge and make the bottom this edge and the top this edge, it would look more like a maybe three ring binder. And some of us may remember those. But I could also create some tabs within that notebook. So maybe, you know, back in grade school, you had science and math and English and this kind of thing. So these tabs can be as many as you want. Um, and we'll talk about adding them as we go get further along, because I'm going to ask you to create a notebook with me uh, to really give you that hands on experience. But before we get there, uh, this notebook has one, two, three, four, five different sections. They're called in one note. And you see the button here where I can add a new section. Uh, within a section, though, and the one that I'm looking at here in this diagram is Quick Notes. And so inside the Quick Notes, I have one, uh, two pages. The one that I'm looking at right now is Keyboard Shortcuts. You can see the name of the page that I'm in. So that's like a piece of paper, if you will, but it's much bigger than a piece of paper, folks. But the Keyboard Shortcuts was there. Um, now we'll talk more about that coming up, but for right now, you can see that there's part of your screen called the ribbon and all the Microsoft programs have a ribbon command, right? So what I wanna do is actually show you in just a second, hold on one moment, please. Okay. I actually want to pop back over to this for just a second. Within the sections, we do have pages. And um, sorry about that. I just hit something by accident there. So here's a page called Quick Notes. Here's a page name within Quick Notes section. Sorry. And Keyboard Shortcuts is the name of the page. But there can be a lot of pages within each section over at the side here. So we'll learn more about those as we go. Um, a note container. I guess that's the smallest type of element that you can put on a page. Uh, note containers are where we type notes in. Or we can create a note container and copy and paste from somewhere and paste into the note container. So you can kind of see the top edge of the container here. And just FYI, the containers themselves may be hidden. So the best way to know where the dimensions of the notebook containers are is to click inside it, like in the contents of it. And then you should be able to see uh, borders like this. And we'll be, again, coming up and doing that soon. So again, notebook, we can get to, and you, yours may look different, that's fine. But within the notebook, we have sections is the largest um, type of division within a notebook. And then within sections, we have pages. And within the pages, we may have note containers, or we may have other kinds of file information. So the next thing I was going to talk about again, and I'm going to show it again, is the top of the screen where you'll see a quick access toolbar. So a lot of us recognize what these are because they have undo, redo, things like that on them. But I just noticed that I'm looking at this and there's no save command. Now, I don't know if you, you know, ever use the save command from up here or not. It looks like a floppy disk 
which, you know, maybe someone has told you about, but you've never seen one because most of them are probably in a trash heap somewhere. But um, there is no save button in OneNote. Uh, you're also not going to really find it when you go over to file. And that's because OneNote notebooks are saving as you go. So that's a, kind of a good thing that you don't have to worry about it, hopefully, losing anything that you're working on within a notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the next screen, which does go a little bit farther into what you see just below that, which is called the ribbon. Whether we know it by that name or not, uh, we see the same setup of tabs when we're in Excel or Word, even Outlook. So I can see right now I'm looking at the Home tab in this diagram. And this is where we're going to be doing formatting a little bit later on. We have a basic text area. Within that, we do have some paragraph commands. So if you're used to, again, some of the other programs, you'll see it split up as font and paragraph here. It's just basic text and we have styles. So I do want you to recognize what these things are actually called. Uh, within Microsoft apps, the top where I can switch here are called tabs, but within a tab, you'll always have groups of commands. So for example, all of this is within the clipboard group. I'm telling you this because if you have to go for help, you'll often see that the instructions are on the draw tab in the pins group, click the such and such command. So commands, of course, are the individual buttons, or we may have to click here to display a gallery. They call it of lots of visual choices that we can make. Here's another gallery that I could expand. And some uh, commands, of course, have more than one part. So if we looked at this command, it says Outlook task, and there was a little dividing line between the picture and the words, um, and you click just the words like Outlook task, which command would you get? Uh, well, you would see a list of commands, of course, but the top of the button where the picture is would give you whatever the first command says when you hit the drop down. Okay. So again, I kind of confused my words there. Sorry. But if you see a button with two parts and you wonder, what will it do if I click just the picture, click the uh, bottom of the command first, and you'll find out by looking at the first thing. Okay, so let me switch back over to my OneNote screen. Okay, so here I am. And I'm now in a notebook that is called My Next NC Trip. I hope that my screen sharing is keeping up. And within the Next NC Trip, I have only one section. And I haven't really given it a good name yet. It says new section one. And within that section, I have an one page and it yet it doesn't have a title yet. Uh, the reason that I wanted to be in OneNote while I'm doing this is also to, again, kind of show you on a real live screen that we have untitled page is going to be what shows the name of the actual page will show. And then the fact that I'm in OneNote and here is the ribbon. Now, a lot of people like to have more room to work on their screen, so you may find that your ribbon is collapsed, like mine now is. So you can see that, hey, where would all the commands go? If I click, you can get the commands, but as soon as I click again somewhere else, it, it again, it loses it. This also can happen when you double click on a command, so or a, a tab name. So if I double click on home, It'll switch me to it, but double clicking again collapses the ribbon. So you might want to try that on any of your screens. This includes all the Microsoft Office apps. Forgiving me for forgive me for calling it Office still. Okay, so we'll be going through a lot of these different tabs as we go forward, but uh, for today we're going to kind of focus in on Home and Draw a little bit later on. Yep, we're going to use the Draw tab. Okay, so here is my notebook list, and I'm going to switch back over now. Hopefully everyone can identify that on their screen, because I'm going to focus in just one more time, a little bit more, on the basic notebook components. This is something that you might want to check out on your list of notebooks. The notebook list can appear on the left or the right of the screen, and it can appear all the way down the side, like the one on the, the right here, or it may appear more like mine, which is just as a list of notebooks. What you see depends on whether you've pinned it or not. So there's a push pin that's in the corner that you'll see when you uh, click 
beside the first notebook name. Let me again switch back over to OneNote. Okay, so the notebook that I'm in, my next NC trip, I click here. I have one other notebook open right now, actually two, called a third one called Quick Notes, but there's a push pin. So if I click this, it shows me my notebooks over on the side. Now, I don't like to leave mine like that simply because it takes up a lot of room. And of course, you can adjust the amount of room. You can point on these different panes. They're called window panes. And you can adjust the size of it, but I may not want to do that. You can also, if you have it pinned, then you can look at the different sections here. So if I click on OneNote Notes, I can right now see the tabs going across the top as well as coming down the side. So it's up to you how you want your notebooks to show. And FYI, the quick notes that I mentioned before is now is still here. It's just down at the very bottom of that uh, notebook pane. So I can expand or collapse and see the sections, or maybe you just see a whole big list of notebooks right now. Not really sure what you have, but what I'm going to do here is unpin. And so it changes the look entirely. I can only see the name of the current notebook, but I still have a drop down to look at the rest of them. Okay. Remember that if you want to close a notebook, you right click over the name of the notebook. However, it appears in your notebook pane and close this notebook is only there. It is nowhere else. You're not going to find it. When you go to file, there's no close command here. So that's how you close a notebook if you don't want to have it open anymore. They can slow you down. OneNote notebooks can make your computer run slower. So maybe if you don't need them, don't have them open all the time. Um, can you guess where we go to open a notebook? I bet you can. You go to File, Open, and we'll talk about that. But one thing I want you to, to recognize is that um, notebooks are stored in a default location. And you might want to go look at your default location with me in just a moment. I have a slide for that. So I'm going to switch back over to PowerPoint here for just a moment. So again, I hope you've been able to kind of see how your notebook pane is listed. And if that still doesn't work for you, the other place you can look is in the place called Options. So all programs that Microsoft creates have options and file options is how you get there. So if you want to try this on yours, go to File and then come down on the left side to Options near the bottom. And there's a lot of different categories that you'll see on the left side. But if you look at Display, the Display category will show you your horizontal tab layout options. So this is talking about your notebook pane. And so move the page or it's not just the notebooks. I'm sorry. It's for the, the pages themselves, which are for me on the right. Uh, you can move them to the left. You can also um, uncheck show the notebook list on the left. I'm going to leave mine showing on the left and the scroll bars you can move to the left as well. So maybe if you're going to be working with me on this, go ahead and only have this option in the middle checked to show the notebook list on the left. This is the default, by the way, in OneNote or how it comes out of the box, so to speak. Uh, there's also other things that you may want to come back and look at later on the display section. And I'll be showing you a few other sections that are in here as well that you might want to be aware of. I uh, mentioned another command here that's under the View tab on the ribbon, and it's called Tabs Layout on the ribbon. So you're probably used to, if you work inside Microsoft programs, that they'll often have more than one way for you to get to a command, right? And so I'm going to click this and just mention to you um, some things about the sections and some other stuff, and I'll get to the View tab a little bit later on. So select to view additional sections may be something that you see if you're in a notebook that has a lot of different sections, section tabs. It also can show a little bit differently. I think an older version showed this as an ellipsis, dot, 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 so you can see other sections. Now, if you want to right-click a section to see other options, including section groups, you can do that. I haven't talked about section groups yet. 
Um, and before I do, there is a button here for adding a new section on the right edge of wherever your sections end. You should see that. Okay, so you know where your sections are. But if you look at this diagram, it shows you a notebook with a section group. So some of us will have notebooks with tons and tons of sections and we have trouble switching back and forth. So what you can do is actually set up an even higher, higher, excuse me, higher hierarchy. Does that make sense? Maybe not, but you can set up an even larger grouping of sections. So in other words, I could take one, two, three sections, and usually they have all something to do with each other and then turn them into a new section group. And I couldn't show it, it wasn't showing the name here. So when I hovered over the name, I did just call it my group. And it shows you where it is. And within my, my group, when I create one, then I can see it open in this second diagram. So again, it's still just gonna contain sections, sections contain pages, and you'll see what's in the group right here. And it even shows the name of the group over in your notebook pane. And if you want to go back, you have a back button that will take you back to the main set of tabs like they look up in this first diagram. So when you really look at it, you do have section groups at the top within section groups. If you have them sections within sections, you can have pages and let's just go look at the pages here. So pages are normally on the right and they're longer than one piece of paper, a lot of them. You can rearrange pages, rename them, add pages you can see from here, sort pages alphabetically by lots of different options. And you can see from what I'm displaying here, there are four pages. And the one that I'm looking at is how did that get here? So I know you can't see it on my screen, but I'm trying to just show you uh, some of the little detail. The reason I want you to see this also, and you're going to be doing this, is again, I kind of didn't tell you everything. Whoops. So in the beginning, I said we have sections and pages and, you know, content on the pages. But really, you can take pages and, and kind of group them together into what are known as subpages. Huh? All right. Let me show you what that'll look like. Okay. So this is the same diagram I just showed you. On the left, you can see I have one, two, three, four pages. But if you hover over the name of a page and drag it to the right just a little bit, you'll see that it becomes indented. So here are three pages now that are to the right of what is called general tips. So general tips now becomes a page, excuse me, a page that has subpages within it. You can see there's now a drop down. So if I click the drop down, that's when I see the subpages. And if I click it again, all I'm going to see are general tips, but the drop down will stay. So I don't know how, how many pages you're going to have in your notebooks, but if it's really a large notebook, this can just help you find things a lot faster without having to look through, you know, 50, 100 different pages over in the pages pane on the right. I hope that makes sense because you're going to be doing it coming up. All right, so the smallest element that we're going to deal with today is not necessarily a sub page, but a container. And to create a container on a page, all you have to do is start typing. Just click and start typing and it will become a container like this. That's what they call them. And there's several uh, types of containers, not types. I'm sorry, parts of containers. So this is the spot where you can actually point and drag a container on the page. But if you want to change the dimensions of a container, you don't actually have the ability to go like you would in most programs and grab a corner and drag it. Uh, you're going to be stuck with, and I just went to the wrong slide again, folks. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you don't have the ability to grab a corner and resize it. Right here is where you do that. You can change the width from here. So you'll see more of that when we, when we get into it. Over here is something they call a gripper. And so if you're used to doing drag and drop like I do all the time in, in programs where you can highlight something and just move it somewhere else by dragging and it's going to look like an arrow like I'm showing you on the screen, you don't have that here. It takes paragraphs one at a time and you can move them up or down. And otherwise you might find yourself cutting and pasting. And I've got a tip here about creating these containers. 
Now you're probably really ready to get into some hands-on at this point. I know you probably are. I'm just going to mention one last thing before we do. Uh, you might be doing it already, but within um, OneNote, you're usually looking at what's called normal view. And this is on the view ribbon tab. So if you want to go up and look at view, you'll see there's an actual group called views as well. And we have three options there. So if you are working in another program, like for example, you have Excel open, but you might need to take a note because on another screen, you're also watching a OneNote webinar like this one, then you can do dock to desktop and you'll have a window open for OneNote all the time. Even if you maximize Excel or some other window, you'll still see this on your desktop and then you can return to normal view. Now I'm gonna demonstrate all this in just a second. Be careful that you don't hit the close button because if you're in the dock to desktop, closing will close OneNote. It doesn't just take you back to where you were. And then we also have a full page view that we, is very similar to the, the um, dock to desktop as well. All right, so it's time for me to have you do an activity. Before I do the activity though, or ask you to, I'm just gonna switch back over again and point out a few of these things. So if you have any notebooks open right now, folks, and you just look at the ones that are open, just pick one from your notebook pane. And then from that one, can you identify the different sections that are in it? I'm just clicking on them here. Okay, you can change the tab, color, tab colors if you want. And if you decided you wanted to relocate a tab, one of the easiest ways to do it is dragging like you would in Excel maybe. So I'm taking add-ins and I'm dragging it in between these other two. That's pretty simple. If you want to add a section, here's the button. And it highlights the name like it would in Excel and you can just type in the new name. So I'll just say, this is other. Okay, and if I don't want the section, I can right click and delete it. Now I'm gonna be doing more with deleting and moving and all that a little bit later on, probably next time, but you can delete one. So you will see a message if you delete something. Do you want it to move to the section called deleted notes? Deleted notes, what's that? Well, it's part of what will become a recycle bin. So you can say yes there. If you really don't wanna see it again, you can say no. But it's like we're used to working with recycle bins, I'm sure. And there will be one that's part of your notebook if you choose to, to put it in something called deleted whatever. It may say recycle bin also. Okay, so let me um, just go back again and tell you that here's all the sections. But let's say that I have these three sections at the end are all related to the same kind of thing. And I just want to put them in a separate place because I don't use them as often maybe. So I'm gonna create a section group. So to create a section group, you can right click over any section name. Okay, and you'll see new section there, but you'll also see the new section group command. And that's what I'm going to choose from here. And you can see it right at the end of all your tabs and it does have a name already. And I'll just call this one my group and press enter. So it's created and now I'm going to open it. So I click the name and it's open. So there's nothing there yet. Now, if you think about it, you may want to actually, again, move some of your tabs into the group. So I don't think I'd wanna do that from here, although you can copy and paste. Again, there's my notebook name. I'm in a section group and it tells me my group is where I am. Um, there's nothing in here yet. So if I want to go back, I can click the back button and I'm back to my original tabs. So to me, the easiest way to put something in a group might be just to drag it. So this doesn't always work. You kind of have to tilt your head in the correct direction to make it work sometimes. But you can also right click over a section. You can do this with pages too and just choose move or copy and it gives you this great little, very visual place. So I'm gonna take this and put it in my group. I just put my group, click my group, 
and I can either have it in two places by copying or simply click move, uh, which I'm doing. And it actually opens up the group and shows it to me. So here is the keyboard inside the My Group group. And then I can hit the back button and see that keyboard is no longer in the original set of tabs. Now you can also go into a group and right click and uh, choose to move it back or copy it back to any other place, including the main set of tabs. And if you wanted to do that, you would click the name of the notebook at the very top when you right click and go into copy or move. Just like this. Move or copy. If I want it to go back in the main set of tabs, I click the name of the notebook here. OneNote Notes, move it. Okay, here it is, back where I had it before. And again, moving sections, it, you can actually do the same way that I just showed you, or drag them. Okay, so within this, I also wanted to show you before I got out and ask you to do an activity with me, uh, to take a look at the View tab. On the View tab of the ribbon, I'm gonna, we're gonna investigate a lot of these commands. But on the far left, you'll see the different views. Normal is what I'm in. I'm going to switch now to full page view. OK, I've got a lot more room to work. And you also get some pen commands, which are part of the drawing tab when this pops up. Now, it's possible that you may not see this. If you um, have a touch screen like I do, you should see it. And I'm pretty sure you'll still see it anyway. Uh, but there's a little toggle that you may have to turn off. I'll show it to you later. Okay, so take a look in the upper right corner with me, though. And you'll notice that there's an X. I'm not going to click it because that'll close the notebook and actually close not just the notebook, but OneNote, the whole program. All right, so what else can I do? Here's a button that allows me to switch to a different notebook if I want to. So I can go to this notebook, go to this section, etc. And I don't really want to do that, so I'll just go back up and click that button again. And then we have a pin, but this is the button. It's a two-headed arrow that will take me back to normal view. And there we go. All right, so view and full page view. You'll also notice that when you look at the top of a page, you'll see a very similar button. In fact, it is the same thing. So I've hit this one by accident a lot. I click this, and I'm like, where am I? I'm in full page view. So I can just hit the same button again, even if I didn't recognize it when I clicked it, and get back. OK, so that's normal view and full page view. I want to show you Doc to Desktop now. So you really can't see it, but I do have a page over here. And it's going to stay there while I'm working. Even if I'm clicking in PowerPoint, it's still there. So I'm going to close this out, and I'm going to ask you to try a few of these things. So are you with me, everybody? I hope so. OK, so I'm going to um, go ahead and ask you to find your list of open notebooks, figure out whether your notebook pane, look, look for the push pin when you click your drop down, and try it out both ways, both pinned where you can see the list of notebooks on the left and where you can only see the current one. And let's go back to the one that is just going to show you the current notebook. Again, any notebook will do for this if you have some. If you just started OneNote for the very first time, you may only see Quick Notes. And we'll talk about that coming up. You will create a new notebook with me here in just a few minutes. So if you do have a notebook open, can you identify the sections and the pages of the notebook? And you all may want to go into the View tab and choose Horizontal Tabs so that your tabs for your sections will show across the top like mine were. I forgot to show you that a moment ago, but go to View and the Tabs Layout on the ribbon and choose Horizontal. And lastly, maybe try File Options and the Display section category. I know these two things sound like they're very much the same and, you know, sometimes they do put commands in more than one place so that we can find them regardless of how we work. 
Okay, so I'm just going to allow a few more minutes for that, and then we're going to move on and talk about something new where we're going to create and save a notebook. And then next time we can all go back and delete it if we don't want it anymore. How's everyone doing uh, with this? If you're able to kind of run through that exercise, why don't you, uh, uh, well, I was going to say give a heads up, uh, hands up, but I see one just came up. Uh, mm, okay. Um, Garrett, I'm going to allow you to talk uh, here. Uh, did you have a specific question? I, I did not. Uh, Guy, I was just... Uh giving a heads up that everything is everything that we're going through is is uh is working at least well for me <laughs> you beat me to it don't say it hey, <laughs> let me know if, if this is working for you uh give a give a hands up uh but i i wanted to make sure i wasn't taking it out um uh bruce same for you i, I see your hand came up did you have a question or are you acknowledging everything's working well Bruce, you are able to speak if you'd like to unmute yourself. Um, no, everything's fine. I appreciate okay. it. I Great. thought I took my hand down, but I guess. No, I all good. <laughs> Again, I, I hated to call out anyone, but I wanted to make sure um, <laughs> that, that folks were going. Uh, Amanda, uh, Rochelle, uh, were, your, were you able to get your tabs uh, taken care of or were they still grayed out? Oh. Hmm. See, oh, yep. Uh, Amanda said she was able to to view. Um, so, so yes, that that's that's very good to hear. And Linda um, has acknowledged that she might be a first time user. A little overwhelming okay. right now. Um, oh. The good news is, um, as as we've mentioned, we will share. Laura will share this uh, a PDF version of this. Mm -hmm. And I'm also doing a recording, so if it helps to be able to go back and and watch watch it and and walk through it again, um, that that will be available for you. All right, everyone okay, great. else seems uh, to to be going well. So uh, yep, Laura, we'll we'll let you uh, continue forward. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So the next thing. Um, we're going to do, you've been exploring any notebooks that you may have. And again, if you are a brand new user, I know it, it is a lot. It's a lot on the screen in OneNote. Um, but I think maybe by creating a notebook with me coming up, it might make even more sense. Um, and you'll be able to recognize it because you're doing it. So we're going to take a look at, um, we will create a notebook. But before we do that, I want you to understand where your notebooks are stored and also how you can look at them if you happen to look at something called File Explorer, which is, you know, the yellow folder button down at the bottom of the screen on a Windows computer. Well, let's look at this first. So if you are in OneNote and you go to File Options, which is, you know, the very last thing on, on file on the left, on the bottom left corner, near the bottom, you look at the options and then on the left side, um, instead of looking at display like we did last time, look at save and backup. Save and backup shows you where things are stored here in the middle. So the default notebook location is what I'm talking about. Now yours may say, of course it will say something entirely different from mine. It may say something like OneDrive. Your files may be saved by default in your OneDrive and I don't want to, it's not a class on OneDrive, but, you know, OneDrive is part of Microsoft's cloud storage capabilities now for Microsoft 365. So if you do have that um, Microsoft 365, you're able to log into it on uh, the web, like through Google, but you also have something in addition to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote, you also have a OneDrive that you can save things to. You can do that from the desktop programs like Word and OneNote, and it is the default location for some of you for your OneNote notebooks. You can change the default location if you want, 
If I were you and you're at work, I'd probably leave it where it is, but just be aware of where it's saving things. There is a backup folder also. So remember the way that we said that OneNote is saving as we go, and that's without having to save to OneDrive. Um, when you're in Excel and you turn on auto save, you're automatically saying that you want to save the file in your OneDrive. And one of the reasons that people do that is because then it's saving as you're making changes to it. You don't have to remember to, to control S or go to file save or any other way of saving the file when it's in OneDrive. So again, your default location may be that. Mine is not. It's on my hard drive. And this is generally where you're going to find it will be a folder called OneNote Notebooks uh, that is under users somewhere with your name um, in your hard drive. Your backup folder might be somewhere different. And the quick notes section, they call it, uh, that we haven't looked at yet is also being saved. Again, to change any of this, there's a modify button right here. You can pick your spot. Also notice while I'm in here that it says that it's going to back up your notebook for you. So even if you're not saving to your OneDrive or whether you are or not, you will get a backup of your notebook. You can actually set this to be, I think, one minute. I might be wrong. Somebody can tell me, but it's like every minute you can have it make a backup of the notebook. Um, other changes we'll be looking at a little bit later on, but just be aware of where your files are being saved. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what it would look like, and I, I'm not going to show you my file explorer, but this is a picture from my file explorer that kind of shows you that I have my documents folder open, and within that I have my OneNote notebooks open, and within that I have a, a particular notebook that I've been showing you already open. And so the contents of it are here. So if you click the yellow folder on the bottom of the screen down in your taskbar, that's file explorer. And what you can see for your OneNote notebooks, you have to find where they are first, which we just looked at. And then if you click on one of the names of one. So notebooks, folks, are actually a folder. If you go looking for a notebook just as a file, you're not going to find it. Uh, you're going to find it listed as a folder name. So here's the folder name and here's the contents of it. So within that folder that is called my OneNote Notes notebook, you have lots of different kinds of things, and this one has, you know, most of them. You may not see a recycle bin. You won't until you've deleted something that can go into the recycle bin. The only things that go in recycle bins are pages and sections and section groups. Individual containers that you put on a page, no, they don't go in the recycle bin. So if you want something back, that's when undo is handy or you may have to go to your backup. You put something on a page and you delete it and you want it back, undo is probably your best bet and the sooner the better. Um, but as far as that goes, if you said, well, undo didn't work, you could theoretically delete the page. Although the page that you delete will go to the recycle bin, eh, it still won't have that thing that you deleted on the page. So just keep that in mind, okay? Okay, if that doesn't make sense, you can ask me a question on it. Um, but there's, there will be a recycle bin if you've been deleting things. It won't show if you haven't. Add-ins.1, lesson.1. So these are file extensions like in Word. Every file we create, we give it a name, but the program actually saves it as a .docx, or in Excel, it's .xlsx. So in OneNote, these one files, .1s, are all what? Over here, they're sections. So those are sections. You don't see pages in here, but you do see sections. Uh, this could be handy because you can make a copy of a section. You'll always find in any notebook that you go look at in File Explorer, you're going to see one of these files. It ends with 1TOC2. Never really found what that meant means, but I'm thinking TOC is Table of Contents. The number two is always there, though. I don't know why. Anyway, maybe if you find out, let me know, okay? But the name of the file is Open Notebook. So if you went to File Explorer, you found one of your notebooks by finding the, the name of the folder, and then you opened and looked at the contents, and you double click on this Open Notebook, it will open the notebook. So it's just, you know, not the way that most of us are going to go, but that's what it's for. Um, one other thing that I have in this one is a section group, and I haven't given it a good name 
Uh, but, you know, the one that I just created called my group, that's what it would show here if I were looking at that one. So these are the parts of the actual things that you create in OneNote, not what I would have thought that a, a notebook is actually a folder. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is, and you maybe just watch before you do it, because I'll do it with you, is when we want to create a notebook, we do go to File and New, and this is kind of what the screen is going to look like. So it doesn't necessarily require you to use any of this section that you see to locate a specific place, because remember, File Options shows you where it's going to save them if you don't make a decision here. So I go to File New. All I really need to do is type in a notebook name and then OK, well, this button would be available. So I call it My New Notebook and I click Create Notebook. And where is it? You can go back to File Options and find out. Or you can um, go to Info and it will show you that there too. If you want to create it in a different folder, you can either hit Browse or one of these other options, or you can say this option, create in a different folder if you want to. All right, so that's how we go in and create um, notebooks. And we'll be doing that together, if you like, in just a moment. Where is the save command? Again, I think I've mentioned this before. It's never. It, you're not going to find it. Even if you customize your quick access toolbar, uh, you're not going to see it among the things that you can add. And you won't find it on file either. Okay, because it's saving as you go. So here's the activity that I wanted us to try together. Creating a new notebook. And within that notebook, I said add three sections. I'm sorry. It's actually going to be four sections. And then within the um, mountains section, we're going to be adding some pages. Okay. And then we're going to turn some of those pages into sub pages. And then we're going to look at our window options. So what I'd like to do is actually switch over to OneNote and do this with you. And then I'll put this activity back up on the screen so that we can verify that we're all on the same page here. OK, so this is more like a demo that I'm going to show you. All right. And hang on just a second. I'm in that full screen mode, so let me get out of there. There we go. I hope you can still see my screen. Can someone verify that they've got my OneNote screen on the in front of them? OK, I'll just take for hopefully for granted that you do. Yep, OK, so we're all going to create a new notebook. And regardless of what you have open right now, that's fine. Just leave it right where it is. Let's go to File on the menu. They don't call that part of the ribbon. Who cares, right? But File, and then click New, N-E-W. And we're going to type in a notebook name. And it's going to be called OneNote Class Project. OneNote Class Project. Now, we're going to use this notebook today and next week. I hope you'll be able to come next week also. All right, so OneNote Class Project. File New. Type the name. Click Create Notebook, and here we are. So you can see the name of your notebook. Here's your new section. There's a page in it. By the way, you can hide this. We'll show you how in a little bit later. But it does say New Section, and that's not a good name. So if you'll come back and double-click where it says New Section, double-click, or I think you can right-click and rename. But this one is going to be called Mountains. And I'll press enter. And I forgot the end, didn't I? So let me go back in. OK, I'll click the plus beside the mountains and we'll add in Piedmont. OK, another one is going to be the coast. From the mountains to the coast, right, folks? We're putting them in. Uh, left to right or western to eastern parts of our beautiful state. Aren't we lucky we have a state that has mountains and the coast? Pretty fortunate. All right, and then lastly, we're gonna add one more and it's gonna be called cities. 
And we do have some of those around, don't we? Yes, we do. Okay, mountains, Piedmont, coast, and cities. I think I want the coast to look more like the ocean. Orange just doesn't work for me for the ocean. I mean, it does for a sunset maybe, but for a sunrise, because you can't really see the sunset over the ocean here, can you? Uh, um, all right, so I'm going right, to right-click over the name of coast, and then I'll come down to section color, pick something that reminds me more of the beach. Let's see. We'll try that blue. And then maybe I'll change the mountains. Right click, section color. And I guess it's maybe all gone by now. Maybe one of you can tell me, but we had a really pretty fall. I'm in the Piedmont, sort of, in near the Raleigh area. And I'll use yellow for the mountains. Okay, so you have your sections. Remember, if you did want to move them, you just drag them. Now I just put cities in the front, but I think I'll take it back over and put it after the coast. So I hope everyone is good with that. All right, notice that as you switch from one section to another, the color actually carries all the way across underneath the name of the section. So I can see it just going from left to right on my screen when I'm on Piedmont. When I go back to the mountains, I can see that kind of yellow gold color there to help me know which section I'm in. And the name is bold also. And in the mountains section, we're going to add some pages. So you might notice that there's a cursor flashing in front of you above the date, and that's where you can add the name. So right now you've got an untitled page over on the right, but go ahead and type in um, mountain ranges. Okay, and when you press enter, it just moves you down a little bit further in the page so that you can begin typing a note if you want to. So mountain ranges. Now, where do I go to add another page? Let's go back over here to the right and you'll see the button to add a new page. And I'm gonna double click on the name, which now says untitled, but um, it's not working. It's, uh -uh. okay, we'll just come back over to where you can see the date and click right above it. And we're gonna call this one the foothills. Press enter. So we have mountain ranges. I'm clicking on it and then foothills. I'm going to go ahead and add a page again. And this one is going to be the Smoky Mountains. You know where I got this information? From the Visit NC website, of course. Yes, I did. Okay. Such a nice website, by the way, really nice. Just so easy to use, oh, so helpful, great job. All right, add page again, I highly recommend it. I really do. And speaking of high, this is gonna be the high country. And, oop. okay, so again, we have pages now in the mountains section, mountain ranges, foothills, smoky mountains, and high country. Okay, well, mountain ranges and the names below it are kind of redundant because these are mountain, what I'm calling mountain ranges. So we're going to turn these into subpages just by dragging them. So you can actually just point over the name of Foothills over in the page pane and drag it to the right a little bit. You'll see a two headed arrow. When you let go, you should now have a little drop down on mountain ranges to the left of the name. So if you click that drop down, it only hides uh, the um, foothills. And if you click again to expand it, you'll see the foothills. So I want all three of these ranges to become part of the mountain ranges uh, group of pages, if you will. So just take those smoky mountains and high country and drag them to the right a little bit. You certainly don't have to do this. I just wanted to make sure you understood how to do it if you wanted to. Nothing like hands-on experience. That's what I say. Okay, so again, if I click on the drop down beside mountain ranges, it collapses or expands it. So mountain ranges could be left looking just like it is. Foothills, they are still pages. They're just known as sub pages now. Okay, I hope everyone got through that part okay. You have four sections in your notebook called one class 
OneNote class project, you have some subpages within the mountain ranges page. All right, view window options is another thing I wanted you to try. So go up to your view tab and look over to the left, click your full page view, and then make sure you remember how to get back out of it. I can also see that when I hover over the command F11 is another way to get there. Remember to use the little button that looks just like this, because this is the other way to get there. So when you're in full page view, remember there's a button that you can use to look at other notebooks and sections. But if you want to just get right back out again, look for that two headed arrow that's kind of diagonal and get back to your normal view. And then maybe try out the dock to desktop. And again, you should see a similar button to get back out of that as well. Okay. Lastly, I've got tabs layout, vertical versus horizontal. There's vertical and I'm going to switch mine back to horizontal. Okay. Now I also wanted you to add a note to some of the pages here. And so if you are like me, I'm on the foothills page, but why don't you go back to the, let's go to the Piedmont section and there's an untitled page in it that will now become titled general info or information if I press tab on mine. So I will. Okay. When I press enter after naming it, it should drop us down into the page with the cursor there. But if it doesn't, you can always come down and click, simply click somewhere. And it wants to start you right under the name of the page in the beginning. I'm just going to type in something simple here. This is my note about the Piedmont. You can see it's going to spell check too. Now, once I have the note about the Piedmont, you might want to ex uh, explore changing the width. That's done from the right edge. Can you do it from the left edge? Not really. If you go to the left edge, you'll find that what you might wind up doing is actually changing where the line or the note is, the typing that is. So if you want to move the note, remember to look for the dots in the middle on the top. You'll see a four headed arrow when you're pointing over it and then you can move the note around. Now, something that is only minorly frustrating sometimes is if you want to add another note, a separate note. So in fact, before I do this, you know, there's really no margins here per se. Um, if you print it out, they don't really have in mind that you're going to be printing this on a printer, honestly. They have in mind that you're going to be using it on a screen most of the time, but you can certainly print and I'll show you how a little bit later. But let's go up to view again before I, I do this next thing, which is to add another container, because what if I drag this way over here somewhere? Then what would it look like if I did print this? It might go off the screen. So here's what we can do. If you take a look at view, and you look at the page setup group of commands, page setup, take a look at the paper size command, paper size. And when you click that, you'll see that the size says auto. It shows up in a panel on the right. So go ahead and click the drop down. And I'm going to make it letter, letter size paper. All right. And then I'm going to if you can do this, you can kind of stretch in between where you're adding pages and kind of drag. You might grab a scroll bar by accident, but I'm trying to go just to the side of the scroll bar. Okay, because I wanted to see the margins of my paper, but I may have to also use the scroll bar on the bottom. And I'm not actually seeing it. It might be I need to go ahead and choose something else. So perhaps change your left and right margins from one inch 
and make them a little smaller if you want. I think you have to type here, 0.5, there we go. So when I put in the left margin of half an inch, I can see that there's a gray area that is showing me the paper, if you will. And it should show on the right-hand side as well, but I'm gonna put in 0.5 there. Now it's acting mighty slow on mine. I don't know about yours. I hope you're still with me there. But another thing that I might need to do is kind of zoom in and out. So if you're looking for zoom down on the bottom, um, do you see it there? No. So take a look at the, the um, view tab again, and there's a zoom in and out there. I'm gonna click on page width. Page width shows me kind of a little bit of area outside and on the right. You can also zoom in or zoom out. And it does look like more like a piece of paper at this point. But technically, this thing can go on for pages and pages and pages, and you might not be able to tell where the page breaks are, like you would maybe in other programs. So the point I, I was ultimately getting to is I wanted to see how wide I could make this without it going off the page. And the answer is you can make it wider than the page. So it's all like there's you can, you can so, show margins if you want, but there's kind of no boundaries here. You can put things wherever you want them. And when we go in and try to add a new note container, a lot of the time it will try to add on to the one that you already have. So if I just press enter at the end of my text that I've typed in, you can see it's extending every time I hit enter this note container. And I'm going to click somewhere else now. It disappears, but when I hover over it or click in it, you can see that the note container is larger. The problem is that sometimes we want to add a separate note because we want that note to maybe go beside this one. And we click and we don't see that happening. We actually go back into the original note. So for example, I clicked away and I come back and click and oh no, it's part of the same container. So that's why we need to know how to resize these things. And just one word of advice, if you want a new container, double click. When you double click, it does create a new con note container. Okay, so now I have two and I can move these around. If you want to contain text into another container, like I want this new note container to become part of, this is my note about the Piedmont, then you are gonna wind up cutting and pasting. I don't think it likes you to drag and drop because see how it took the whole container with it, except for the R that I apparently did drag out. So it might be easier for you to just use the traditional cut and paste to move things from one place to another. And I'll just say this is not a new note container. But when I click away from it, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. Unless you're pointing over it. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you about notes, that you've got a page and you can just click anywhere and start typing. You may be in an existing container or you may not. You know how to resize them, how to move them. And one last thing I'm gonna show is you can move entire paragraphs up and down. So let me pull this note a little bit over. Let me come up to my view and zoom in a little bit more. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now point to the left of the note. And you'll see this when you're in the note, see the little shape on the left outside the note container. And that's called a gripper. If I point over it and I start dragging, you'll see that it's actually moving this paragraph. And a paragraph, of course, is when we press enter, right? Just like in Word, it creates a paragraph. So you can actually move a paragraph at a time up or down this way. Let me see if it'll move it left and right. Yes, it will. So four-headed arrow means you can move it in four directions, right? So if you're thinking it's going to act like Word, well, kind of, but not really. 
as you can see from this. I, when I um, was working on the content for this webinar, I was thinking about things that people have asked me about and uh, other things that I've noticed in my own exposure with OneNote. And again, if you have any questions, just let us know, okay? All right, so we have a new notebook. We have new sections. And within each section, we have pages. Yes, awesome. So I hope everybody's good. Now I'm gonna try something. I'm going over to the coast, I wish. <laughs> Piedmont's great, but I'd love to visit the coast. So when I go to the coast, I have an untitled and I'm just gonna say dictation. Now you can try this on your own, but I'm gonna click down below that to get myself a note container and I'm going to click on home. I mean, it's, if I'm in the middle of a meeting and I want to dictate some notes, then I might not want to do it if I'm in a physical meeting where everyone is right around me and I'm talking and the speaker uh, of the meeting is getting annoyed at me. But, you know, you're muted, so you could try this probably. There's a dictate command on the home tab. So if I click dictate and it should be working now. Let's see how well I'm doing with my dictation. Well, it works pretty well because I've tried to train this to work with my voice. You may have to go down to your start button and look for microphone and go into the microphone settings. But this is such a nice thing for me. The only thing is sometimes it doesn't know when I'm actually stopping a sentence and when I'm simply pausing. I can get a lot of run on sentences this way that I don't want. What do you think? Question mark. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna click my microphone to stop it. Oh. <laughs> but this is just another way for you to get notes. I love it. Now I did have to do a little bit of training. So again, home, dictate, Microphone button, little toolbar should show up. There is a tools button within that toolbar, dictation settings. And so you do wanna go in and, and try to work with this a little bit. Enable auto punctuation is good. Uh, but then again, it can also not put periods where you think it should. So if you turn enable auto punctuation off, then you'll be able to, and I'm just gonna cancel this. You'll be able to go in and program it to do some um, punctuation for you just by saying the word. So let me switch you back over to the PowerPoint presentation again. Hey, Laura, real quick. Oh, yes. Sorry. But hopefully there, there was a question about the on the paper size. OK. Um, can, once you apply a new paper size, can you make that a default for any new pages? We are actually going to do that coming up just in just a few minutes. Um, that would be something that we do with what's known as a page template. And if you're looking over in that paper size area, you should be able to see near the bottom of that pane where we were changing the paper size, uh, something that says save as a page template. And that will do it. All right. Thanks. And look forward mm -hmm. to seeing that uh, as we come upon it, too. Yep. It's coming up as soon as I finish dictating. Okay, I hope that was good. And again, we will touch on that coming up right away. All right, so in the meantime, um, using dictation is part of my little section on uh, getting text within pages and page templates is part of that. But this just real quickly showing you a picture of the dictation command on the home tab and also the little toolbar that should show up when you're using it. So there's two ways to stop dictating, either this or you can close the whole toolbar out and then just go back to the ribbon command again. But also remember, you can go into those settings and adjust the sound and the volume and the auto punctuation. So if auto punctuation is on, you can still say words like this, like period, comma, semicolon, because in the beginning it was just making new sentences because I have a tendency to pause a lot, but you can also get it to undo what you've just said 
or delete that, or you can use backspace. You can use that command in your dictation, which sure does save me a lot of keystrokes and selecting with the mouse. Now, remember we talked about OneNote as a web version only that you can get on, like on your Google Chrome, certain things work for it that don't work on the desktop. Oh, well, I still think you're gonna wanna use the desktop. So we're getting ready to go into text formatting next, and then we're gonna do page templates. So I'm kind of pulling it all together, but we are gonna get where you can save that paper size as well as um, everything else you've been working in. So dictation, really useful. But moving on from there, if you have your notebook in front of you, you may not have all the, the text that I do, uh, but if you can switch back over to the mountain section, and the paper size again is up still on mine, so this was the command I was talking about. We're gonna get to it, I promise. I'm gonna close the paper size for the moment though. And just remember, we were kind of examining the view tab. So if you can go to the, the mountains section of your notebook and look in the mountain ranges page group, if you need to expand it. And then we're going to go into, how about the Smoky Mountains page and just come down and click a container somewhere. Um, I would love to have some comments about the Smoky Mountains, maybe why they're called smoky. Why are they called smoky? I'll put that in quotes. Now I think I can answer that question myself is because they, it looks like there's smoke above them a lot of the time, right? So cool. So beautiful. But what I'm going to do is just illustrate some very simple commands for formatting. So maybe after you've got some text in, in one of your containers, go back to your home tab and try out some of these commands under basic text. We've got bold, we have fonts, etc. Now some of this you can also customize. I know uh, that question about the paper size, being able to save it just came up. So keep your eye on this as well, because when we do some formatting here, then we might want it to remember the formatting, right? And maybe this is a question and I'm going to have an answer for it. And I hope this answer is right. that it's not really smoke above the mountains. Um, we don't want to see that, right? So when I highlight this text, I can see a little toolbar pops up above it. This is only when you highlight text, like you double click to highlight a word and so on, that you'll see that toolbar. And it's called the mini toolbar, M-I-N-I. -I. And you can also turn that off in file options. So if it gets in your way, like it does on mine, you can just go turn it right back off again. But just be sure that you're able to highlight things and able to change fonts and do things like that on this little toolbar. There is a button that is for clearing the formatting. It looks like it's supposed to look like an eraser here. So when I click on it, if it's bold or any of these other choices, it should take it right off again. Okay. All right, so one other thing to talk about, let me just pull this container down. I'm gonna add another container. Where are the Smoky Mountains? I want to borrow the formatting from one place to another. So my new container, it doesn't have to be a new container, it could be part of the same one, but it will work either way. We're going to use the Format Painter. You've probably done this before, but I'm going to select this text. And then uh, there might be a button on that mini toolbar, but I know for sure I can find it on Home. So if you look at your Home tab for the moment, Format Painter should be over to the left. 
If you don't see the words Format Painter, that's okay. You should still be able to find the little paintbrush. So when you click the Format Painter, I bet some of you are saying, oh yeah, I know this. We use it all the time in Word. That's exactly right. So once we click the Format Painter, it, it kind of sucks up the paint, if you will, from what you just had selected. And then you can drag across whatever you want to paint and it will have the same appearance. So I'm gonna try that again. Where are the Smoky Mountains? They are above the foothills and below the high country. Now I could be completely wrong on this. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the answers that I'm saying. So again, I want this to look like the text that I formatted down in my other answer. So I select that text from the other answer. Oh, there's the paintbrush. It does show up in the mini toolbar. Or I can come back and get it from here. But you must have text selected that you're basing the paintbrush on or you're dipping the paintbrush into. Then I click the Format Painter. And now my brush is loaded, you can tell. And I'm going backwards here because that works better for me, usually. And when I release, it looks like the other. So you can use this as a way of setting up, you know, like a template. So you could say, yep, I want to be able to add all the, of this into pages that are similar to this one. So I could turn this into what's called a page template. Of course, you can copy placeholders or note containers into other pages. You can also copy pages. All you have to do is go over to your uh, page pane and choose copy. And their copy link is not the same, but you can choose copy. And, or you can go to move or copy. And the only difference is what you choose at the bottom. You want to move a page or copy a page. So I could have created these three if I wanted them to be alike just by creating one and making copies. OK, whatever is easier for you and what you've already been doing is usually the answer to that. Remember, I can make these into just one container if I want. Why would I keep them separate? I don't want them in the same location as one of the main answers, I think, there. OK, so that gives you an idea. Now, one last thing I'm going to do is create some text. And I'll just put that in a random new container here. So I'm double clicking to make sure I don't get it in the same one. And I'm just going to type in styles, the name of what I'm getting ready to use, styles. So when you have uh, something selected within a note container, you can go back up and find styles right beside your basic text formatting. And I'm going to click on heading one. And then I'll go back and make it heading four or you can try out the different styles. They preview what they will look like. Page title is another one. So all it's doing is grouping some formatting together and, and letting you get it really quickly without having to go back and use individual commands from basic text. Unfortunately, you can't create your own styles. So if you're a big time word user like I am, oh boy, I use styles all the time and customize them. But not here, I'm afraid. We have to use what we're given, but it is a fast way of doing some formatting of text. Now, normal is what you start with, just like in Word. And also, there's styles in uh, Excel, too. And we always start with normal, so I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, you can create bullets and numbers. You're going to see those commands. You can also indent text if you're using a certain style. So let me click in front of this and hit indent. So see how it's just pushing it over from the margin. And there's a decrease indent. This is back under basic text. All right, so what we can do with text is somewhat limited, as you can see. I'm going to delete this container that I typed in styles. So just hover and select the container. You actually have an X here. Or just press delete on your keyboard, the delete key. OK, so that was some information about text formatting in OneNote. Now, why do you, you know, why do you spend so much time formatting individual things like this? Well, hopefully you're not going to. 
because a lot of us are going to get pages started and then we need another one very similar to it and then another one and another one. So now I'm going to talk to you about page templates. So there are templates for pages in OneNote. There are not any templates for entire notebooks in OneNote. Okay, so there are page templates, but there aren't any notebook templates per se. If you wanted to try to create a notebook template, the best you could do would be to copy one of the notebook folders that the, the notebook is a folder, remember? So you can copy the folder and then just give it a different name and everything in it would be in the new copy. But let's look at page templates. So I'm going to go to the coast for this. No, maybe I'll go to the cities. That's right. We're going to go to the cities. Okay, so if you have your city section, you still have an untitled page there. And in the page title, I'm going to type in city name goes here. Now you can format your titles. So I'm dragging across it and I'm going to apply a style. I think I'll use page title is what it's using. Maybe I'll leave it on page title, but I'll come back and make it bold. Maybe change the color. My city names will be green. Okay. Now green. Well, we do have green cities. Okay. Now I want to go back up and click on the view tab again. And let's take a look at this other section inside page setup. So we looked at paper size already. Let's go ahead and change that again. So paper size. I'll make it letter again. And I'll just leave the margins as they are. And I'll close the paper size again just to get more room. Okay. And the next thing I'll do is create a new note container and say about the city. Press enter once. Okay, format that heading any way you like. Use some text formatting, at least make it bold. Okay, go back to view again and look at the page color. Now, none of these colors are very dramatic, but if you can locate across from page color, switch background, you see that? It's a toggle. So those of you that prefer the dark mode, <laughs> you can go to the dark mode. And then if you look at your page color, they're dark. They're very dark. So switch background. I'm going to leave mine on light. But choose whatever color you like there. Rule lines. Next command over. Under view. You want it to look like a real notebook? Okay, you can do that. Just remember, it doesn't really set up margins for you. Your containers can go anywhere on the page. Grid lines. Mm, I'm going to go back with none. Hide the page title. It will delete it. No, I don't want to do that, but you actually can get rid of the page title here with the date and timestamp. And you can insert a date and timestamp another way. It's under insert. But in the page title, you can hide it. I'm just going to leave it because I want to see it. Okay, now what we're going to do is turn this into what's called a page template. So go up with me to insert. And towards the right, you'll find the page templates. And by the way, do you see the date and timestamp there? Just to the left of where we are. Yep. There they are. I'll click on date and time. There it is. I love that. I love that I can do that. How do I do that in Excel? Um, control shift semicolon will give you the current time and control semicolon gives you just the date. Anyway, page templates. There's a top and a bottom on this one. So if I click the top part of the page templates button, then it opens up a, a task pane over on the left. 
excuse me, my other left, my right. <laughs> Don't know my left or my right. No one ever taught me. But if you just click the bottom of page templates, then you'll get a list of the ones that you've been using. So if you don't see much there, that's okay. Come down to the bottom and you'll see page templates and that will open up the task pane on the right. Hey, I got it right that time. Or close it. So the top versus the bottom. You can get to the very bottom and get to page templates or click the top of the button. So once you can see the page templates, I've got one called My Templates. I have a category called My Templates. Guess why? I've used this before. So just notice that you are in something at the top that says Add a Page, which means whatever you click on, it's going to keep adding pages to where you are. So remember, you are going to experiment. You may want to come back and delete the extra pages that you might wind up with here. But go ahead and expand some of these. For example, Business is always popular and click on one of these like simple meeting notes. Oh, wow. Personal meeting notes. I like that one. Let me go back up to view though, because I'm not really crazy about the page color. Oh, um, well, some of these have backgrounds on them and it can be a little difficult to get rid of the background. unless you know that they're frozen kind of in the background. Now I know you're saying, wait, wait, what did you do? What did you do there? Um, just hang on one second for me. Oops. My wonderful dog, Daisy, who is a senior citizen, but still very alert and very attentive to people who are maybe delivering things in the neighborhood. And I think she saw or heard rather a UPS truck go by. So <laughs> my apologies, but I wanted to get up and close the door and hopefully you will not hear Daisy if UPS comes our way again. So anyway, what I was doing before, and I'm, I'm sorry for how long this is taking, is showing you that you can take an existing page and do a lot of formatting to it by the view tab, the text formatting. You can do page colors and things like that. But then we went into insert and we looked at page templates. Yes. So we've got our page templates um, task pane open. And when we click on one of the categories and then we pick one of the page templates, it actually creates the page for us. So if you look at mine, you're going to see meeting title, meeting title, meeting title. I have three new pages that I've created from just looking at those templates. One of them that I chose, I didn't really, I liked what the content was, but I didn't really like the background. And I think it was this one, personal meeting notes. I found that when I went up to change the color of the page or maybe remove the picture, going to view page color, changing my mind and making it green did nothing. And that's because there is an image in the background of the page. So if you find the same thing on one of yours and you want to remove the background, it's actually a picture that has been placed on the page and they use a command called set as background. So if you point near the edge of the page and right click and you see that set picture as background kind of looks like it's the picture of it is highlighted. That means that they did that. Uh, the people who created it. So I'm going to click set picture as background again. And now when I click, I can actually drag the picture. You can probably see me doing it. So you can insert pictures. We'll be doing that um, probably next time. But if we drag the picture, we that means we can also, when we select it, press delete and get rid of the picture. So if you see pictures and backgrounds, but you say, well, I love everything else about it, then fine, get rid of it and then do your own thing. You can insert a picture and set it as the background, for example, if you like, or insert your logo or do anything else you may want. But before I go any further, the one that I have in front of me, which was created from personal meeting notes, is one that I like and I want to keep using it. 
So you may want to go check your paper size and make sure that that's set up the way that you want. I'll change this one to letter. And then you'll see a command here for saving it as a template, which is the very same command that I can see in the page templates. It's just at the bottom. So I switched over to paper size. And one other thing to note here is that on the far right of my screen, I do have paper size and the page templates both open. So they now have what they call pain switchers, like task pain switchers. So you can either go back to insert page templates or you can just switch over to it if it's still open. But what I'm going to do is use the command at the bottom of the templates that says save current page as a template. You want to remember the name and, you know, maybe keep it short. I'm going to call this one weekly meeting notes. And someone asked the question before, how do I make it a default? Well, here's your command. For the current section, it says, you can make that a default. So just by adding a new page in the regular page pane, then you can make that a default. And I'll go ahead and do it for this section that's called cities because I'm going to have a lot of cities. And then I'll save this template. Okay, before I do the next thing, I'm going to just click on some of these other page templates that I was looking at and actually created. I'm going to right click and delete the pages. In fact, I can just go ahead and delete all of them. Now, if you're wondering, can I select more than one at a time? Yes, you can click and shift click. And then I'm right clicking and deleting those pages. So the one that we started from, if you have it like I do, uh, you could actually turn that one into a template as well. Any page you have can become a page template because the command save current page as template, it works. But since we've done that already, you should now see a section in your page templates called My Templates. And when you expand it, you should see what you have. So I have several and I'm going to click on Weekly Meeting Notes. And now I have another new page this, that wants a meeting title. Or we can also should be able to get that if you set it as the default, then clicking Add Page will give me another one, just like the other one. So the only difference is I need to put some cities in. Okay, I'll put in Charlotte. I thought I would put in Charlotte in place of meeting title. <laughs> That's not how you spell Charlotte. Okay, and then for this one, I'm going to put in Wilmington. Does Wilmington count as a city. When I lived there, it felt like a big town, but I guess maybe it's approaching city size at this point. Okay, so I hope that will help you. I think that's one of the biggest tips I can probably give you on working with OneNote is using page templates. So do you remember where they are? I hope. Okay. So, Guy, if you're still there, do you want to see if anyone has questions right now? Yes, I am. Uh, we did have <laughs> a quick question uh, going back to the dictation uh, oh, tool. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm going to allow Alex uh, Perry um, a chance to talk. But the question, the question was basically because uh, I. I didn't want to mess it up here, but is there a way to record audio and dictate at the same time in one note? Record audio? Yeah. Um, hmm. Or I guess could you record the audio and then go back and dictate that in one note? Yes. Yes, you can. So you can see that right beside dictate, there is a record audio command and it will continue until you stop. And then if you transcribe, converts it into a speech, but that's not really the same as dictating. It might be easier if that's what you're after. I'm not really sure. 
So would the, I guess the transcribe would allow you to take that audio and put it into text. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, Thank you. try You that. answered, answered my question. Okay, well, Uh, I hope so. Give it a shot and let us know next time, maybe. Sounds great. while I'm up here, uh, just uh, one other question. Um, Okay. I, I did, I did uh, bring in one of the templates, but what I noticed was um, when I went in to edit that template, it would not let me edit. It, was there a certain button or something you clicked on to allow to edit it? No, I don't think so. So can you tell me which category and which one you were using? Uh, I think I did a project overview. I think it was under business. Under business, okay. Here it is. Okay. So what were you trying to change about it? Yeah, interesting. You're allowed to edit it, but I'm Mm -hmm. not. Huh. Um To my knowledge, there's nothing that they have done on any of these that you cannot theoretically change or remove or update. Maybe I just need to close out and open it back up. Maybe, yeah. Do you Maybe. have a lot of notebooks open? I do not, but let me try that. And, um, anyhow, I'll get back to you on it. Okay, sounds All good. right. Thank Yeah, you. you should be able to, though. Yeah, we're going to talk again um, next time more about if you've used one like the meeting notes, maybe, or the one that we created, you have things like to these tags, they're called, and the tags are on the home screen. So if you notice things are marked with checkboxes and things like that, they've been using them from here. And we'll learn more about them and how they can be used on next time session. Uh, session. So you do want to come back. Okay. Is this is really good stuff? I hope. That was a really good teaser, Laura. Are there uh, any other things we can look forward to uh, that that you Yeah. want to share for for then for session two? Yes, I will. And um, since it looks like we're get headed towards time to wrap it up here, um, I'll say that if you have your OneNote class project file, maybe you know don't delete it. You know that to delete it, you're going to have to go find the file in File Explorer. So hopefully it'll be there next time. Don't close it. But if you do close it, you can reopen it from file open. And it actually should look at where your notebooks are and show it to you in the list, hopefully. Um, but for next time, you'll hang on just one second. Let me get down there because. Yes, here we go. OK. So today we worked mainly with notes and dictation and some of the things that come with OneNote, like the page templates. But next time we'll explore other ways to add content, including drawing. We'll also look at um, adding tags. We'll be looking at inserting files from Word and Excel and other places, if you like pictures and things like that. Also looking at video and audio. Um, organizing and searching workbooks, the tags that I mentioned for the check boxes and things like that, you can use those to your advantage in finding information quickly in a notebook. So we'll be talking about regular searching and how the scope of the searching and things like that, but we'll be using tags as well. And then managing and sharing content will show you how you can put a password on a section. Uh, this has to be done a section at a time to prevent maybe people who shouldn't be looking at a section from getting into it or changing it. And we'll also talk more about sharing notebooks and sharing the content in other ways, including things like creating PDFs and documents from your uh, OneNote. OK, so I'm hoping that you got the gist of starting one today and uh, we'll go out and explore it and start working with your OneNote if you haven't been already, because it's a wonderful program. And I look forward to seeing you again. Great. And So. sorry to ask and sorry for everyone, depending on what the answer is, but any homework or anything we should, uh, you know, play around with, uh, if you will, Definitely. uh, in prep. Yeah, if you want to use the notebook that we were in, I mean, feel free to go ahead and make any changes that you want, including, you know, adding new sections to it, trying out new pages and note pages, especially the templates, the views. Uh, we will be doing, again, tags and things. If you want to start using them, great, but I'll show those next time. 
those are on the home tab. Um, we'll be using printouts and file attachments. A lot of the things under insert we'll do next time. Um, talk a little bit about the history settings and the review settings and probably other ways of working with, um, like I said, sharing content next time. Okay. So if you, you know, if you want to change the notebook, great. Maybe keep what you have in it. And if you want to add anything to it, that's great. Perfect. Wonderful. Well, okay. um, seeing no other questions come in, uh, as a reminder, we are back here next Thursday, 10 to noon again. And, and Laura's kind of brushed on what we'll be going over. So I uh, hope all of you join us again uh, for this. Thank you so much for your time. Will, uh, today. will it be the same meeting link? Guy. Yes. Uh, yep. Just going there. Okay. You should be able to uh, use the same uh, link as, as you did today when accessing it. Uh, if there are any questions or, or problems, um, especially prior to the day of, feel free to reach out to me, guy at filmnc.com or guy.gaster at visitnc.com. Um, and happy to resend a link your way if needed. Perfect. All right. Okay. Well, again, thank you, Laura, uh, for, hey. for, for everything today. Thank you uh, to our attendees, and uh, we will see you guys next week. Thank you, everyone. Have a great one. Bye now. Bye.